So let's take a deep dive now into the data editor where all of our work starts. Glide is like the interface of your business. It's where you bring in all of your disparate data sources from different locations that some people might not have access to. You then connect that data together. You enhance it with computed columns, integrations, maybe connect it to APIs, use artificial intelligence to enhance it. And then you show that data in layouts that you totally control. Maybe you have different teams. Some need to see this set of data and be able to add to it. And then another team that needs to be able to see a similar set, but they're not allowed to add to it. You have full control over how you show your data and the data editor is where all of this starts. So we can see that we've already imported an Excel file and this has been converted to Glide tables, but maybe we have an external data source that needs to stay where it is. In other words, people need to update an Excel file in our OneDrive or a Google Sheet or a BigQuery or something like that. This is where we add external data sources and sync data. So I'm gonna stay in the world of Microsoft just for now and you can see that I've already added my Microsoft account. I'm gonna to go to my OneDrive where I have a sample sheet, uh, which is just called contacts, and I'm gonna add that. So this is gonna add this to Glide and we're gonna be able to edit this data inside of the data editor, but where it actually lives on our OneDrive will also still be able to be editable and people, whatever changes people do there will sync to Glide and vice versa. And of course, now that we've got this external data source syncing to Glide, we can build screens off of it, just like we did with our Glide tables. I'm gonna to go to the layout editor, create a new screen from data and choose that synced table and Glide's gonna create a basic default screen on that data. And we can change the layout of that exactly as we want. And this is live syncing with our external data source. So if someone came in and changed this person's details, we would see that updated in Glide. And similarly, if one of our users clicked add here or it went into an item and clicked edit, that data will be updated in our external data source as well. So you can see the power of bringing in multiple data sources and using them uh, to power interfaces, which your users then edit and that updates everywhere. But I wanna talk a little bit about two different types of data or two different types of columns. You can see here we've got different icons to denote the type of data that's found in these columns. Glide recognizes this as a phone number, recognizes this as text, this is an email, this is an image, which is actually just a URL path to an image hosted online. But what's really important to realize is that when you're building software, you need another thing, another element. So if I go over to the products table here and click new column, we can choose the type of column. And the first types that we see are these kind of basic types of columns. We've got uh, Boolean, number, text, URL, and these are all just powered by text basically. Even though it might not seem it with the image column, what we're actually doing here, if we type in image, um, is we can upload images to this column or just paste in the URL. So it's still just text based. Just a quick bit of clarification here about images as it can be confusing for new users. This is an image that we've uploaded to the image column. And if we look in our external data source in the actual Excel file itself, uh, we can see that this is just simply an image link. And if we copy one of these image links and paste it into our browser, we're gonna see that image online. So it's just an image that's hosted online and then Glide is rendering that image in the data editor. Software needs more powerful features than this. And this is where computed columns and integrations come in. Down here, we can see computed columns. And these are things that will live only in Glide. If you add one of these in, a, in an external uh, table like this, it won't sync to your external data source. It will just live in Glide, but it can interact with that data. For example, we have say the uh, stock level here of 500 minimum stock level. And maybe we wanna create an alert which says if the stock level drops below the minimum stock level, then uh, give an alert, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new column here and I'm gonna say stock level and it's gonna be a number column. And this is just a basic column. And we're gonna put this here and we're gonna say that this is 499, right? So we've just gone under the minimum stock level for this item. I'm just gonna delete this image because we don't need this. And uh, if I create a new column here and choose an if then else column, which is a computed column, we can create this functionality in the data editor. And again, this will then allow us to build out functionality in our app. So I'm gonna click if then else, and I'm gonna say if the minimum stock level is actually, I'm gonna change it to be if the stock level <laughs> is less than the minimum stock level, then output 
uh, restock, else nothing. And we can see now that this item has a new value in it, which we can use in our app. I'm just going to rename this column to be um, stock alert. And this says restock. Similarly with this one, if we say 2,400, this one's going to say restock, but anything that's the same or above doesn't have that. So this is kind of like a really simple way of working with Excel formulas, but you're in Glide. And there are many other computed columns that will really help you power up your apps and the data behind them.